that's a cheap shot. That hurts my feelings. <laughs> Take it back. That's think, small I, of you. That, that, that's petty. <laughs> that's an incomplete. Going into this football season, I did not expect to hear about Taylor Swift every single week. Hey, hey, 5 here's what we're going to do today. An evergreen episode. This is a way for us to give the audience the gift of another episode this week without having to record during the holidays. But which holidays? You might be listening, say, December of 2023. Or maybe you're listening in April, on April Fool's Day of 2268. Either way, welcome. But if you're listening in the future, I'd appreciate it if you drop me a line on social media and let me know if there's still Twitter... Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's X or maybe it's called Shex now because I made billions of dollars and own it now. Either way, Shazier. Hey, so we can't talk about the crazy game that happened this Sunday night? If you want to pretend we've already seen it and make up all the details, I'm game. But technically it hasn't happened yet. Oh, uh, well, it's time to time travel. 88 miles per hour. Hey, for those who don't know, that is Back to the Future. And from Wondery, I'm Ryan Shazier. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody's up to speed on that one. I'm Dave Damashek. I, d- I doubt our producer's seen it. He's a he's a young guy. This is Grid on Gut Check. Yes, welcome to Gridiron Gut Check. Every week, I talk ball with Steelers icon, two-time pro bowler Ryan Shazier. This week, like I say, is a little bit different. We're taking some time to check in on our gut checks from this past calendar year, 2023, and look forward to the ones coming up in 2024. Shakes, let's tell everybody what we're doing first. Well, that's what I'm trying to do here, 5 We're going to start with the best takes of the past year. I'll give five takes, and then we'll rank them top three. Win, play, show, just like the Westminster Dog Show. You got it? Yeah, let's get it. All right, here we go. These are your nominees for best takes of 2023 here on the show. Tyree Kill will top 2,000 yards receiving this season. That was from Ryan Shazier. Number two, C.J. Stroud should have been the first overall pick. I think you floated that one as a Buckeyes guy. I think I agreed with it, though. Here's one for me. The Dolphins will win the AFC. That's TBD, but the pick is looking pretty savvy one way or the other. They have stormed the AFC, although I guess that was more in the first half of the season with the playoffs upcoming. The next one is that the Cowboys will finally overcome their demons in big games and vanquish the Philadelphia Eagles to claim the NFC East. And the AFC North will be the best division in football. That was a prediction. And both teams, all four teams, I should say, at the time of this recording, are at least 500. The Steelers dragging things down a little bit at just 500. All right, Shazier, let's start with what you consider to be the boldest and best of those takes that has come to pass. So the boldest of all these takes, I will have to say, is Tyreek Hill for 2K. And the reason I would say that is he had a big season last year. But with the fact that him saying he's going to have 2K and then actually play and surpass it or actually get it, be the first receiver to ever reach this mark. I think that's the I think that's the best take so far. If he gets it, we don't know if he's going to. He didn't play in week 14, obviously, so or week 15. So we have to see um, if he's back out there for another big game against America's alleged team. Either way, it was a great call. And I think what's intriguing about Tyreek Hill in Miami, remember, it wasn't very long ago. I'll take you back to what? August of 2022, and we were seeing tape from from the uh, the Civil War reenactments known as the preseason, and there was a lot of concern. Boy, he's about Tyreek's about to learn what it is to play with a pedestrian quarterback because Tua doesn't have the arm to catch up with Tyreek Hill's wheels and all of that, and it's going to be a whole new world and not as good a one as he had in KC. Who's suffering more now? It's taken a year and a half to reach this point, but they really miss Tyreek Hill. 
I know they're the defending world champs and they're not giving away the Lombardi that they won in 2022. But in 23, that offense is really suffering without Tyreek Hill. As I said last uh, week or two weeks ago, whenever I said it, I think the real X factor is is uh, Travis Kelsey feeling his age a little bit and he is not the dominator he was even a year or three ago so that offense is struggling there and in the meantime the Dolphins are thriving because of Tyreek Hill as long as Tyreek Hill Hill is in good health the Dolphins getting over on the Eagles is a fairly bold one but we knew that the roster was nice they just had to come together a little bit we'll see if they can complete the deal and hold on to that title and create some real bad news for the Eagles who just a few weeks ago were looking like they were going to win the number one seed in the NFC. Now they're going to have to start the wild card round on the road if things hold here. Best division in football. I think the breakout story here is with the AFC North. Joe Burrow's injury dinged the chances of that coming to fruition. Nevertheless, Jake Browning and Joe Flacco have combined to keep the division relevant and on the AFC side of things, hard to argue against the Ravens being the best team out there. So I think that one's come to pass pass cj stroud being the number one i'm gonna go with that as the number one if the dolphins win the afc i'm gonna retract it and give myself the award in the win position for the best bold prediction if they do end up going to the super bowl in a conference that includes the chiefs and the Bengals and the ravens and the bills and everybody else then damashek will have done some some uh, savvy work here in the meantime it's pretty clear cj stroud was the right pick how the collective wisdom took us and it was everybody saying you gotta take Bryce Young over C.J. Stroud, and the evidence is abundant that that was the wrong direction to point. So I'm going to say that's number one. I'll give you your flowers because it's really only the injury that has stopped Tyreek Hill from getting to 2000. He's still, still might. Coach pitched still 70 might. on somebody, so I won't, I won't be surprised if he tried to force him the ball. And then I'll go with the Cowboys winning the NFC East over the defending champion, uh, NFC um, champion Philadelphia Eagles as uh, the third place. You good with that one? That's cool with me. Okay. All right. I don't, you I don't make... see the Dolphins win the AFC, but uh, it's cool. Well, they may not even win the AFC East the way things are going right now, but uh, at the time of this recording, it's looking like a pretty smart pick there. So there you have it. The winner is, like we say, number one, C.J. Stroud should have been the first overall pick. Two, Tyreek Hill getting to 2,000. And three... All right, Cowboys winning the East, but if the Dolphins end up going to the Super Bowl, these all change and the Dolphins go to number one. Next up, you guessed it, the worst take of 2023. Shazier, are you ready to hear the options? Oh, man, we can skip this one. Listen, it's important you stop and take a look at the man in the mirror so that you can get better and uh, and wiser for 2024. Let's see what wisdom we attempted to drop on you before this season kicked off. Number one, Aaron Rodgers is going to save the New York Jets. I know I didn't say that. I was skeptical of that. Did you say that? I said, well, I said that they would be better. I don't think I said that he will be save better, them. Sure. <laughs> but it's- I don't remember that. The aforementioned producer Hank is a stinker because neither one of us, I think, properly announced that the Jets were going to die. I just told you, I thought the Dolphins were going to win that division. That was the bold take from that division. But uh, Aaron Rodgers no, I now. Did, I think at the beginning of the season, I did say that Aaron Rodgers was going to win the division over okay, the Okay, if you want to back, that, that's what we can't have, 5 0. We can't have you lying because we do have. <laughs> We do have the tape. We can go back four months and find it. The next one is, this one's on my shoulders, and I really did mean it, and it's not because of any Homer tendencies. The Steelers will win 10 or 11 games. Now, it's still plausible that that could happen, not the way things are looking right now, but uh, they are going to fall short of at least my expectation. Next, this is a Shazier special. Ohio State will win the college football playoff. I don't know if you heard, they didn't even make it. <laughs> First of all, I just don't understand how Ohio State didn't even get like, like a thought. It's like, we lost to the number one team in the country on a last second drive by six points. Like, how were we not even thought of being in the college football playoffs? Like that, Over it, it doesn't make sense. Be, is the question, who would they have replaced? Think about this. Our loss is better than Georgia's loss. Georgia lost to a team that had a loss and they were the eighth seed. Washington, you know, they're undefeated. You know, Florida State, you know, 
they're undefeated. Okay, but okay. Still well, I'm, I'm going to step in here because this is getting embarrassing. I, I just want you to understand this. You understand this is settled hash by the football gods and then uh, abetted by the committee that this made the decision. So you can belly ache at this point all you want. We're Texas not changing lost, that. That like, was a bad prediction. Ridiculous. We're better than Texas and Alabama. Literally. I'd like you to be like Jerry Orbach at the end of the Dirty Dancing. I do this all the time. When I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. That's all. And then you just move That's on with your life. Earlier. You don't have to That's try to defend earlier. this. It's a bad opinion. Deion Sanders in Colorado will take over college football. If you were watching through September, you were probably patting yourself on the back for predicting this in December, though. Maybe the sportsman of the year, but he's the coach of a terrible football team. I didn't say say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say it either. I didn't say that. I I said they were probably in five or six games at the beginning of the year. I said they were going to win three. I was off by a game. Yeah, so right, I was I don't know. that's five. a bad take. A lot of people did get over their skis. I guess we did on this show celebrate Dion revolutionizing college football, and that was right around with Pat Forty somewhere. I think it'll be better in next year for sure, though. I won't be surprised. Well, but they... we did say it specific to this season, like, wow, can you imagine? And we sang songs like everybody else. I guess we did, like I said, get a little over our skis there. So we should wear it a little bit. And this was my very worst prediction. I said that the, I did say about the AFC North before the season, you could make a powerful case for shaking up the four teams and whatever order they come out in, convincing me that would be the finishing order, then shaking up again, and then looking at the new results and saying, yep, that'll be the order. It was. It felt like there was a very narrow difference between the best and worst in that division. Instead, the Ravens have proven to be the class of it, and I said they were going to finish in last place, so... That was a bad pick, as it turns out, by by Dave Damashek. All right, Shazier, go ahead. Worst pick, worst prediction of 2023. I think the worst prediction is that you said that they were going to be the last pick. The, yeah, the, 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 the Ravens. That's think, small I, of you. That, that, that's petty. <laughs> that's, I think that's that's the worst one. Uh, the, the second worst, I would say Dion is, is taking over college football. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think – I think that Dion in Colorado – have the ability to make the college football playoffs next year, though. That, this oh, m- my God. Do, do you understand the exercise here, Shazier? We're not trying to justify our bad past predictions and talk ourselves year. back into them. I didn't, I didn't but say that's this fine year. if that's the way you want to roll. Go ahead. I, I like no, it. So you said, so I think Ravens is the first one. I think okay. Dion is the second. And then I think Aaron Rodgers is the third. I mean, I think the one that we have to make number one, even though it isn't properly, wasn't something that either one of us said in August or any time in the spring, but the way we kind of bought in with the vast majority, I don't, I, I'd love to see the individual out there aside from that Colorado beat reporter who Dion a win or three into the season said like, do you believe? And the guy wouldn't answer. And he said, you don't believe yet. And I have summoned over the week since then that comment from Deion Sanders. (laughs) I would love for that beat reporter to have said once the season finished at four and eight to be like, Hey, coach, do the guys believe yet in the locker room? Cause I was the one holdout and I'm looking pretty good at this point. Um, I think, I think the way the entire football world thought that boy Deion Sanders has changed college football forever and the way they finished up has to be number one and it's extra funny that Sports Illustrated despite the last couple months of the calendar year were like ah well we already decided he's sportsman of the year now we just got to stick with it so that's got to be number one that's fine if they're the number one seed in the conference and I had him in last place it's fair that I have to wear my Ravens in fourth place pick yeah because I had him in second place and the Steelers probably, you, you hope, win a game so they're not too far off a double-digit win. So I think we should say, uh, is it Ohio State or is it Aaron Rodgers? It's we can't really Rogers. take Rodgers to task because we never saw it, so it's got to be Ohio State. I think I, I think you saying Ohio State, when you knew that they are yeah, owned no, by no, the team no, to this, the north, that you no, for some reason thought no. that this was going to be a different year, and it was same no, old, same old. I think you have to wear that at number three. I can't three. agree with that. I can't agree with that. Well, it's done. 
It's done. Because I've just done there's it. There's multiple teams in the college football playoffs with one loss. We lost to the best team. They just didn't give us a chance. With Aaron Rodgers. But you picked them to make the playoff to win it. They didn't even make it. That's a bad prediction. Had, no, no, because they should be in it. We're better than Texas and oh, better not, than. Oh, no, oh, no. Wow. So you have to. Yet the this this was a slow baking one. I see. This was like no. three weeks in the making. Now you've decided, well past <laughs> the expiration date. You know what? It turns the Buckeyes should be in that Final Four. You still no, haven't told me who be. they should be in over Georgia. They, Georgia's not in Georgia. it either. So they're, they're better than Georgia. They're better than Alabama. The only reason Alabama's in because they played Texas and they beat Texas and they're better than Texas. Like. It doesn't make sense to me, but whatever. We, we, but I, I can't agree with that. I can't agree with that. Aaron, we, Aaron Rodgers is still on the team. He just not playing. So we thought he was going to save well, the that's Jets. A, that's an incomplete. If you don't go to class all semester, you get an incomplete. You don't get an F, right? Hey, all I'm just saying is I think that you have to go with the Aaron Rodgers as the third. All right. You have your opinion, and I – I'm a committee of one making the final decision here. And at number one, it is Deion Sanders has changed college football forever, saying that this in September. This is a dictatorship. This is ridiculous. Number two. Listen, I think I'm being a pretty noble guy by announcing some of my picks as being terrible, like the Ravens coming in fourth place. Now you have to say that the third spot is Ohio State making the playoffs. They Listen, they came in second place in the Big Ten. Does that make you feel better? It's the third place on our list here, though. And they were like sixth or seventh in the committee's estimation. No, the only reason they did that because they didn't play in a uh, college only football I mean, in, a, in a tournament game because the no, way no. the Big that's Ten not, set That's up. not the only reason. In fact, it's yes. not the main reason. The main reason they aren't in the college football playoffs is that they lost to their arch rival in the big game again. That's why. Hey, hey all I'm saying is hey, what? Alabama has lost to Texas, but they're in. But it is what it is. We're better than both of those teams, but whatever. Okay. Hey, you know who's better also? Syracuse with their new quarterback, Kyle McCord. Good luck to him. You know, hey, you know that's, who's not uh, better? As good at Indiana. Indiana's not better. That's a cheap shot. That hurts my feelings. <laughs> take it back. All right. Let's let's uh, let's take a pause here. Regroup. Shay's ear is clearly shook here. We'll take a quick break. Then we'll be back with more in a sec on Gridiron Gut Check. Okay, welcome back to this end of year gridiron gut check episode, or maybe it's a start of year. Happy 2024, everybody, if that's the case. In this half, we're going to continue recapping football in 23 and spend a little time looking ahead to 24. Shazier, are you ready to roll on to our next category? All right, let's go. We're ranking the biggest surprises from 2023. Here are our options. Number one, the much ballyhooed tush push, the most unstoppable play Maybe of all time in the NFL. And yet, not something that anyone else or very few others have been able to adapt to their personnel. That's what makes it extra fascinating in my book. Next, Taylor Swift being a weekly player on the NFL scene. At number three, the Rams would be a fringe playoff team behind Puka Nakua. That's the most fun name to say in pro football. We can agree, whether you like the Rams or otherwise. Puka Nakua! And also, Kyron Williams. Next big surprise, Joe Flacco leading the Browns to the playoffs. And the last big surprise, Brock Purdy being the second coming of Joe Cool, Joe Montana. Oh, yeah, no, nah, you're getting out of hand. You're getting out of hand with the Brock Purdy one. Uh, Brock Purdy's is balling. I don't know why he's the second coming of... Uh, uh, Joe Montana. But How the about Tom Brady then? He's not a second coming of Tom Brady either. Wins like, the you, Super Bowl least, in his second year. He's a lot like Montana and Brady. I'm just saying, I need to see more than that just to, you know, Ben was in the Super Bowl his second year as well. So, um, you know, that's all I got to say. Hey, yeah, uh, and he's going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, you're right. Well, there's been other people that's been in the Super Bowl in their second year. And in fact, in the 21st century, um, the I think the season that quarterbacks go to the Super Bowl most in is either their second, fourth, or fifth season, which is an interesting detail. About half of the quarterbacks that have played in the Super Bowl this millennium were on their rookie deal 
that is not a coincidence, by the way. But continue. So you're you're you're, you're underwhelmed by the Brock Purdy story. So you're moving. No, no, on he's there. Not, I'm not, it's not. I'm underwhelmed. I want to say it's the biggest surprise. He played well at the end of the last year, so it, it makes sense. So the the things that's very surprising to me going into this football season, I did not expect to hear about Taylor Swift every single week. Um, Puka Nakua or Joe Flacco. So the Joe Flacco one, I can't pit it at one because like he's a backup quarterback. And the Browns are already up and down throughout the whole season, but they've been winning. So I, I, I can't go with him. So I would have to probably go Taylor Swift one, Rams and Puka Nakua two, and then Joe Flacco three. Or Rams first, and then Taylor Swift second, and Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco's the third one, though. The Twitch push was unstoppable last year. Yeah, okay. That's a that's a, a great point. So we'll throw that one out. Brock Purdy, I don't know, man. I I, I Maybe you're a little more cynical, and you're waiting for that other shoe to drop, which is completely fair. I think there are a lot of mirages out there, and it's sort of like to – compare it to another sport in baseball when a good young hitter comes up and the league's pitchers haven't gotten a good look at him or the other effect works when a pitcher gets called up and is out on the hump for his first tour around the league they can dominate professional athletes for a while but then those professional athletes go back into the lab and they take a look at what that guy is doing and then they come up with um with some pushback now can that guy figure out what they figured out he's doing. And once that's taken away, can he still thrive? I think we're at a point now where we still have to wait and see with Brock Purdy. I still am wild though, that given the machine of looking for quarterbacks in the quarterback league and the obsession with college football and the combine and everything else that this guy could slip through the cracks. I think it's remarkable. I say that's number two because number one and and the Rams also, I think by their own measure, Kevin Demoff, the executive for the Rams, sent out a letter to season ticket holders saying, hey, we won that Super Bowl a couple of years ago. This is going to be some lean times, but we need you to stay with us and stay loyal because brighter days lay ahead. I think that was that amounted to like, please don't bail on us because we're going to be <laughs> terrible this year. Um, and here they are making a playoff run. I think that's remarkable. I think the Taylor Swift thing, uh, the part about that is, I wish we could go back and clean our brains like uh, men in black style and say Taylor Swift is going to date somebody and not like go on one date with an NFL football player. Who is it? Would you have thought it was going to be Travis Kelsey? I mean, I would start at the top of the list of the guy who everybody says is the most handsome is Jimmy Garoppolo. I would have thought that would be. More likely. Travis Kelsey, a little bit of a wild card for I'm, me. I'll I'm say not going to lie. Like, Travis Kelsey is somebody that I definitely can see her with, though. Like He's hysterical. He's a great, great fella. But yeah, still, I, think, I just wouldn't have come to my, wouldn't have entered my brain. I, I just, I, I didn't see Jimmy Garoppolo because the, Jimmy Garoppolo has the history of dating some very uh, wild women. So I just, like, I don't think that that matches Taylor Swift. You know what I'm saying? Well, where Travis Kelsey, obviously his past girlfriend, you know, she was black, but she wasn't really wild, you know, and he's been on dating shows, which is a little different, but he's also a huge name and it kind of makes sense. Like Travis Kelsey is, even before Taylor Swift, is one of the biggest names in the NFL. So it makes sense to me. I didn't think I would see her on every news cycle. And they're both and they're both well known for some of their dating habits. So I guess them um, overlapping in the Venn diagram of the dating scene shouldn't be that big a shocker to us. I guess. I guess. I what was surprising about it was that the conspiracy theorists couldn't take a day off. This was all big plan from football to try and make Taylor Swift popular. <laughs> yeah, no, made, Taylor Swift didn't need any help with that one. dollars or whatever she made in the last uh, year or whatever. But yes, she needs a little more. Uh, she needs a little more pub, so that's why she's going to date an NFL football player. Everybody's weird. Okay, no, it definitely I, helped out, but I want to say that she needed it. I want to go with, unless you really want to fight me on this. As I talk it through, I want to say Brock Purdy. This is crazy. 
It's crazy. This is 25 I, years I after Brady. We, should, we didn't know this was going to happen. How did this I, happen again? I didn't, I didn't think we can. I, I don't think we can have him as one. Brock Purdy okay. played this well the end of the whole last season. It's not a surprise. He's just doing the same but stuff. But then that he, he came doing back like, from that. And then when you saw him get hurt against the Eagles, you thought, oh, what a sad story. He's never going to be that. the same again. I didn't think that. Really? Mm-hmm. Now, when people get hurt, especially nowadays with modern medicine, a lot of times people can get back to the same level. It's just if you rushed him or not. And I don't feel like they rushed him. So I don't And then especially with the way he played versus the Steelers, the first game of the season, I was wow. like, once I saw that, I do well, right. That changed my opinion after I saw week one. You know, it's not surprising. Like he he finished the game, he finished the season undefeated. The only reason he has a loss on his record is because of he got hurt at the end of the season last year. So I was like, man, they're gonna come back in. He has literally all the same players, but he gets to spend the whole off season with them. And and he might not be throwing to them the whole off season, but just spending time with them, getting to know them, getting to like them, understanding protections. And then now the the coach is actually building it around him now. I, I'm not surprised by that at all. Like I, I'm, I, I, I'm. Let me say this: surprised that he's in the MVP conversation. Yes, but the, his level of play and him playing consistently. No, not at all. I think if we make the Joe Flacco playing well enough for the Browns to stay relevant and keep winning games, if we expand that one, here's the compromise I'll offer you. That a number of backups, everybody's a cynic in pro football, and a lot of pro football teams have been structured specifically around their starting quarterback to uh, so um, severely that it was understood in the building, like with Peyton Manning and the Colts under Bill Poley. And it was understood if Peyton goes down, the season's over, but we're not going to worry about that eventuality. We're just going all in on 18, and that made all the sense in the world to do it that way. But It feels to me in 2023, like the successful teams, most of them at least, have a system that can overcome the absence of an individual. I talk about the Jenga theory all the time, that if you remove the wrong piece, the whole thing's going to implode. It's interesting. A lot of these offensive systems that are installed by the progressive OC or the head coach... um, make it feel as though even in the quarterback league, I mean, witness Jake Browning and Joe Flacco and some flashes from some bum level QBs. Bailey Zappi had a good game and uh, Zach Wilson had a 300 yard game and everything else that, that the savvy teams seem to be capable of overcoming the loss of even the most important position in sports. That's been surprising to me. So what if we make that, that number one, or I could go the Rams number one and then Brock Purdy. You could say the same thing about Brock Purdy. You know, like if you just plug Sam Darnold in, you know, he might not be playing as well as Brock Purdy, but they probably will still be winning. And that's why the that's why I don't think Brock Purdy should go one. Like, Shaq, if if I told you that Taylor Swift was gonna be on the on NFL every single week. At the beginning of the season, you would be like, no, there's absolutely okay. no way. All right. I, I, I don't want to be a curmudgeon. We'll make Taylor Swift being NFL relevant uh, the number one. Also, if you're reading it in 2168 on April Fool's Day, you're going to be like, what? I, it really is going to be confusing what the string of words. Taylor Swift is now playoff rel- or is now NFL relevant because she hung out at Arrowhead. People are not going to be able to make sense of what was happening every week, with their forefathers um, back in the early 21st century. OK, so we'll go Swift one. How about we go backup QBs playing well and Rams three then? If you're not as That's excited about the Purdy one. Okay. Done and done. It's decided. There you have the win play show. All right. Good stuff on all that. Up next, we're looking forward. Our producer, Hank's given us five predictions for 2024, and we're going to rank them. It's going to be hard to pick three from this batch. We'll have to do our best. We'll have to do our best. Okay. Here we go. The choices are Travis Kelsey will retire at the end of this year. Now, Hank, if you want to jump in here and explain yourself, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, I'm going to have to assume you're talking about 2023. So we're hours from that. Or maybe it's already come and gone and we have our answer there. Interesting. And I would not be stunned. And if that happens, I do fear that Taylor Swift is going to get some nasty tweets from Chiefs fans because they'll blame her for opening Travis Kelsey's eyes to the whole three-dimensional world, which I think he was already aware of before he ever met Taylor Swift. Next, the Bears will keep Justin Fields and trade the pick the Panthers owe them. I don't know about the second part. I think this is a boldish 
prediction. And the way Fields is playing, you can kind of make a case that they should go get your pal Marvin Harrison to help them out. That's a good bold one. Cowboys will lose in heartbreaking fashion in these upcoming playoffs. I don't know if that's bold, but certainly could happen. Jim Harbaugh will lead Michigan to a national title and then he'll leave for the NFL. Plausible. And lastly, Texas QB Quinn Ewers will win the 2024 Heisman. Now I know that that's from producer Hank because only he would put something in there about his uh, his longhorns. All right, Shazier, go ahead. Which one do you like the best out of that group? So this one's going to hurt my soul to say this, but I think Jim Harbaugh is going to win a national championship then leave. B- b- because I, I just think that he's going to get suspended. I understand that, you know, the team up north is going to offer him a contract. But if he gets suspended, even if they say, hey, we're going to ride with you until then, I know that he eventually wants to win the Super Bowl. He's a Super Bowl. He's a a pro caliber coach. I just, I can definitely see him moving on to try to see what's next in his life when it comes to the NFL. So you d- so we talked about that a couple weeks ago, I guess, when we first got a look at what the final four was shaping up to be. You like the Wolverines to take care of business, not once, but twice. I mean, the biggest, we could have put that in the surprises. I don't know if it counts as the biggest surprise of this year, but Texas opening up as a four point favorite over Washington dropped my jaw when I first saw that one um, because making a line uh, that's what's great about college football in traditional regional sense is like how's the Pac-12 team that can throw the ball all around going to shape up against them boys from the Lone Star State and and all that and how would you divine who has the edge and all that because it sort of felt like an old school World Series where you never saw them it would all be in the theoretical now we're going to see it but I dig where you're coming from and I think that's noble of you to say that the Wolverines can actually get it done here. Travis Kelsey retiring is fine. I buy the smoke. I think Kelsey said he's feeling his age a little bit, and he's aware of the world out there, and it's pretty clear. I know Shazier wants to fight me on this a little bit, but Travis Kelsey, by his own standard, is not where he was in 2022 or 2021. So I guess that's a a prediction that certainly could come to pass. Bears keeping Justin Fields. I think that's a bold take. I think it's a, I think, I don't think they need to move on past them. I think they need to move on past their coach, but I don't think they need to move on past him. But I'm not a GM, I'm not an owner. That's not my decision. But I think that Justin is playing good ball in his last nine games. And you can definitely see the difference between him and how he used to play and how he used to. Okay. Look. Well, let's blend these a little bit then. Jim Harbaugh and where he wants to go. And I do think that one way or the other, you assume there's going to be some sort of penalty from the NCAA um, leveled at the program. He's not going to want to stick around for that and for any number of other reasons. You know, highest level NFL wants to win a Lombardi. His brother did get one against him. He still wants to get that. Does he go to the Chargers, though? To try and coach up Justin Herbert? Does he go to Foxborough to take over for Belichick if he moves? Does he want the Bears gig? If he wants if he wants to go to Chicago, I mean, if for what it matters, he played, obviously, with the Chargers and the Bears. And so maybe there's, I don't know, some sense that he wants to wear those colors again. But if he goes to Chicago, if he goes to the Chargers, he obviously is now buying into Justin Herbert and making that work. If he goes to Chicago, I don't know if he has, if they hire him, he will have the juice to say, I want that job, but I don't want Justin Fields. I think Ryan Poles would take that that swap if J- Jim Harbaugh is saying, what I do want is Drake May, a fresh start, and then I want to take over the Bears and make us into a champion. I think Ryan Poles would say, okay, and then deal Justin Fields. So it's hard to try and predict the way all that is going to work and are there teams out there that want justin fields and what are they willing to give up for him there's buzz even where you sit right now in pittsburgh that some people think the steelers should chase justin fields he is an imperfect qb because of the amount of time he holds onto the ball and the amount of times he drops the ball or throws it to the other team he's played much better 
you can see that he is a specimen, but he is flawed. And I don't know that he's the the answer for everybody. Then again, is Caleb Williams definitely the answer? Boy, that's a tough one to to see clearly. I think I, I, I'm vamping here, Shazier. So jump in. I love your Harbaugh one that he's going to leave for the NFL. I don't care about the Quinn Cowboys. Ewers everybody knows they're losing right the now. That's out. The, yeah, yeah, Cowboys. Yeah, we're not worried about the Quinn Ewers one and the Cowboys. So we just have to figure out the Travis. So we figured out our top three. We just, to me, Travis Kelsey is still the best tight end in the league. He has the best numbers in the league. But I, I can, I, I can definitely see him and his brother retiring in the same. Not year. unlike Ryan Shazier, he also has a burgeoning podcasting career, though. Maybe he wants to do that. I just don't see him just retiring and then just like, I'm just going to do strictly podcasting. You know, it's just, I know he probably runs a few different businesses, owns a few different things. Here's the most, here's the most common. Here's the, here, here's what my prediction is. The most common one you'll hear early in 2024 about pro football is the Bengals are going to go to the Super Bowl next year because they'll be getting Joe Burrow back. The way they're playing, they haven't completely fallen apart with uh, with Jake Browning under center. I think there's a buy-in then from the team that Zach Taylor knows what he's doing here. They are going to have a third or a fourth place schedule for what that matters, and it does generally matter. Um, I think people are going to be all in on the Bengals all through 2024, all the way through autumn of next year. Um, that's one I'll float for you now. I, here's a bold prediction for me, not on the board. Mike Tomlin will be the head coach of the Washington Commies in 2024. Or, or oh, here's another one for you. The Washington Commies will not be the Washington Commies by kickoff 2024. How about that? Oh, you think you'll have a different the name? Yes, that's a bold prediction and a new head coach. And his name will be Mike Tomlin. And maybe part of the deal will be, I'll come coach you, but my face has to become the new logo. And they will be the Washington Tomlins. And it'll just be his face on the side of the helmet. Maybe that last part won't come through. So this true, is but Evergreen. The obviously, obviously, this is Evergreen. But my bold prediction is Marvin Harrison is going to stay in college for another year. And then Ohio State is going to beat the team of North. Now, see, you can't just say stuff when you are as close to the program as you are. Do you have a reason? To I don't think have a that? reason. I just I've been hearing a lot of like text, like not tw text. I heard like tweets that said that Ohio State uh, collective is trying to offer him enough money, him and Travion Henderson enough money to uh, stay another year uh in college so you should chip in on that then uh, I, I don't have the money to uh, offer that much i money. owe you a hundred dollars i said the buckeyes would lose two games so i gotta hey, get you a hundred so bucks that's a good start for you you pay, you pay that hundred and collect it so we can keep marvin harrison i i got news for you marvin harrison ain't staying at ohio state although aiden hutchinson did it aiden hutchinson did it he doesn't have to worry about money i guess makes some sense nah i don't know i i that's a, that's bold. I just don't think it's going to come to pass. All right, let's settle it here. What is the what is our what is the the standard we're trying to achieve? The boldest one or the one that is definitely going to come true? All right, so the best one. So this is I think the Jim Harbaugh is probably the most realistic. No, no, no. The most realistic is the Cowboys losing. That's definitely true with the Niners in their conference. Okay. So the Cowboys losing. Do you want to put that as one? One that's most likely to happen. Yes. Jim Harbaugh too. You like that? Uh, yeah, I do like that. All right. And then Ohio State beat in Michigan. <laughs> Marvin Harrison is three. No. What about mine? Mike Tomlin, new head coach of the Washington whatevers. Autumn 2024. So the only part of that I would agree with is that I think Mike Tomlin, mean that they will have a different name. I don't know about him going to be the coach. Well, I'm putting it in there just so it makes it on the record. So when it comes to pass, I look smart. And Hank, the producer, putting this Quinn Ewers jive in here. I don't know. And what's more, I don't care. What I do want to see is Arch Manning get his shot. What We're going to keep Arch Manning out of the public eye in 2024? Enough's enough already. Arch, if the Longhorns are going to play you, go anywhere. By the way, there's a, a college football team that plays in Pittsburgh. They're called Pitt. Why don't you go up there? That'd be neat. Yeah, he's That's not good going idea, to Pitt. Good idea, right? He's not going to Pitt. 
I listen, I'm trying to talk it into being Shazier. All right, you know what? You want to be a Grinch, so be it. Go be a Grinch. I say to everybody else, happy holiday, whatever holiday you're celebrating, whenever you're listening to this. 2023, a grand year for us here on the show. We really appreciate all the people who make it happen for us on the Wondery side of things and uh, at the Blue Duck side of things in terms of production. They make us look good or as good as we look, which in my case... Ain't that great, but it would look a lot worse without the uh, those uh, producers and everybody else behind the glass. Shay's here. Good times. Happy holidays to you, man. We'll talk in 24. Man, uh, Shaq, I think you look great, man. And uh, happy holidays. And everybody, make sure to follow, rate, and review the show on wherever you're listening. Check us out on YouTube on the Wondery channel. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Happy holidays. See you all next week.